with example four. So here we have a function, g of s and t, and we're going to find all the critical points and classify them as max, min, or saddle points. So our first step to do this is going to be to, de to determine our first derivative. So in this case, of course, these are partial derivatives because this is two variable optimization. We have the variables s and t. This is unconstrained optimization as we have no external constraints here. So we have g um, sub s, the derivative with respect to s. So I'm going to take my s cubed and do the derivative of that. That's 3s squared. And then I have my 6st here. And the derivative of that is going to be 6t. And then the final term, t cubed, the derivative of that is 0. So there's my first partial derivative. My second partial derivative with respect to t. For the first term, the derivative is 0, as there are no t terms. For the second term, it's going to be minus 6s times the derivative of t is 1. And for the third term, I have the derivative of t cubed, which will be 3t squared. So those are my first derivatives. And now I'm going to do step two. I'm going to set these derivatives to be equal to 0 and solve for the x and y pairs. So setting these both to be equal to 0. I now have to decide the process I'm going to use to solve this system of equations. And I'm calling this a system of equations because I have an s variable in both equations and I have a t variable in both equations. In other words, I cannot independently solve s and t. If I were to just use this equation, I would get s in terms of t. If I were to solve this equation, I would get s in terms of t and vice versa. So they're not independent, and we call this a system of equations. Two equations, two unknowns. Now I've got two approaches I can use to solve a system of equations. One is elimination, the other is substitution. Which approach do you recommend for this problem? That's right, we're going to use substitution because what we're dealing with is non-linear. We have exponents that are 2 for s and for t. So it's going to be tricky to do elimination. So we're going to not do elimination. We're going to do substitution. So using substitution, do we want to start with equation 1 or equation 2? Which one do you guys want to start with? Let's start with equation 1. Sure. So equation 1. I have 3s squared minus 6t is equal to 0. So I'm going to isolate one of the variables. It's going to be easier to isolate t as it doesn't have an exponent. So I'm going to move 6t over to the other side. I get 3s squared is equal to 6t. Now my aim is to isolate t, so I'm going to get rid of the coefficient 6 by dividing both sides by 6. I get 0.5s squared is equal to t. So now I have an equation for t. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this equation, equation 3, into equation 2. So I'm going to take equation 2, negative 6s plus 3t squared is equal to 0. And I'm going to sub equation 3 into equation 2. So wherever I see t, I'm going to sub in negative, I'm going to sub in positive 0.5 t squared. So this becomes negative 6s plus 3 times t is 0.5s squared, all squared. Now doing this, I get negative 6s plus 3. And what I can do let me give this square brackets, 0.5s squared. I'm going to apply the exponent to each term inside those brackets. Now, this is only doable because there's no addition or subtraction 
within the brackets. There's only multiplication. So I can apply the exponent to each term in the brackets separately. So I separate the 0 0.5 and I separate the s squared and I apply the square outside the brackets to each of those independently. So then I get negative 6s plus 3 times 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.25. S squared squared, what I do is I multiply these exponents and I get S to the power of 4. So now I have negative 6S plus 3 times 0 0.25 gives me 0 0.75 S to the power of 4. All of this was equal to 0. I've just been a little bit lazy in writing that. Okay, now comes the time to solve for S. So how do I solve this equation? I can factor out 0 0.75, sure. If I factor out 0 0.75s, I get negative 8, 6 divided by 0 0.75 is 8. And then s divided by s is going to be 1. So the s cancels out. The next term, I'm going to divide this by 0.75s. I'm going to get 1s to the power of 3. Now what I can do is I can set either of these terms that are being multiplied. If either of those are equal to 0, then this equation will be resolved. So if 0.75s is equal to 0, this will work. So this only happens when s is equal to 0. Alternatively, I could have negative 8 plus s cubed equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the negative 8 to the other side. s cubed will be equal to 8. And then I take the cube root of both sides to get rid of the cubed on the s. So I have s is going to be equal to, the cube root here is 2. Is it going to be plus or minus 2? Only plus. Only plus. And the reason is I have an odd root, so we keep original sign. The plus or minus thing only happens when we have an even number root, 2, 4, 6, 8. OK? So now I know what s values would satisfy this system of equations. When s is equal to 0 or when s is equal to 2, now I have to figure out the associated t values. So I go back to equation 3 here. The equation t is equal to 0 0.5 s squared. So t is equal to 0 0.5 s squared, my equation 3. So what I know is when s is equal to 0, t is going to be equal to 0 0.5 times s is 0 squared. That's going to give me 0. And when s is equal to positive 2, t is going to be equal to 0 0.5 times 2 squared, giving me 2. OK, so now I have my critical points. I have two critical points. So now the next thing to do is to classify them as mins, maxes, or saddle points. So I'm going to set up my table. I'm going to have my st coordinate here. One of them is 0, 0. The other one is 2, comma 2. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to need to get my FSS, the second derivatives, FTT, and my FST. So to get my second derivatives, I'm going to grab my first derivatives and do the derivatives again. So I'm going to take these first derivatives. And we're going to do the derivatives again. So for gs, I, I said fss, these should all be g's here. So I'm going to take this first equation, 
right here. And I'm going to do the derivative with respect to s. So the derivative of 3s squared becomes 6s. The second term, 6t, has no s in it. So I'm done my derivative. Now for gtt, I'm going to take my gt derivative right here. And I'm going to do the derivative with respect to t. And that gives me 6t. And now I'm going to do the derivative gst. So working off the one I still have boxed, so the derivative gt, I'm going to do the derivative with respect to s. I have one s term here. So the derivative of that is going to be negative 6. Derivative of negative 6s is just success. That sounds like success. Um, the derivative of negative 6s is negative 6. OK, so now I've got um, the formulas for my second derivatives. I have to calculate the actual second derivative values. So for my first coordinate, 0, comma 0, doing these derivatives, I get 6 times 0 for GSS, and that gives me 0. For GTT, it's going to be 6 times my t value of 0, which is going to be 0. And then for GST, or GTS, I'm going to get negative 6. Now the last calculation is going to be GSS GTT minus GST squared. So I get 0 times 0 minus negative 6 squared. This is going to give me minus positive 36 for negative 36. So this value is negative. What does it imply when our, our saddle point test here is negative. So when we have a negative value, we have a saddle point. Now repeating this for our next coordinate, 2 comma 2. For GSS, I'm going to have 6 times my S value is 2, giving me positive 12. For GTT, I have 6 times my T value is positive 2, giving me positive 12. For GST, it's still going to be negative 6. And then for my saddle point test, I have 12 times 12 for GSS times GTT minus GST, which is negative 6 squared. So this is going to give me 144 minus positive 36, or 108. Now this value is positive. This value is positive. So that means that this is not a saddle point. So now, concluding that it's not a saddle point, I know that it's either a min or a max. What I see from my GSS and GTT derivatives is that they're both positive, meaning that we are concave up in both directions. In both directions, we're concave up. This is going to be a min. Basically, uh, it's shaped a little bit like a bowl at this coordinate, and this is the bottom of the bowl. Now, the last thing is usually we have an objective to this. We're trying to optimize profit or happiness or something like that. So uh, we would solve for what GST is. The G of S and T would be equal to, so I take my original equation, S cubed minus 6ST plus T cubed. And I substitute in my critical points. So when we have 0, g of 0 and 0, it would be 0 cubed minus 6 times 0 times 0 plus 0 cubed, it would be equal to 0. When we have the coordinate 2 comma 2, our other critical point, this would be 2 cubed minus 6 times 2 times 2 plus 2 cubed, this would give me 8 minus 24 plus 8, or negative 8.